Welcome back to another Cloud Demystified demo series brought to you by Cables to Clouds. Today we have some pretty exciting, uh, pretty exciting demo for you today. We have some exclusive content that we've been provided by our counterparts over at AWS. Um, today we're going to be looking at some uh, IPv6 migration scenarios with uh, VPC Lattice. Um, uh, you know, VPC Lattice is a very, very new product from uh, AWS. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and, and if you're actually interested more about the kind of theory, um, the overall story and, and, uh, and, you know, progression of VPC lattice and how it applies specifically to network engineering, um, and, and things like that, we actually did a full podcast episode of Cables to Clouds with Justin Davies and Alexandra Wiedes over at AWS. Um, so if you're interested in um, hearing about that, hear more about that, there is a uh, link in the description or there should be a title card up here pointing you to that video. Um, so yeah, so l let's get into it, guys. So we have, a, a like I said, an exclusive video uh, demo that we've gotten from AWS where some uh, a couple AWS networking specialists, uh, Adam Palmer and Ankit Chada, are... Um, showing some pretty cool migration scenarios that, that that are you know kind of enabled by VPC Lattice that um, that wouldn't be uh, possible otherwise. So um, yeah, Alex, tell us a little bit about the demo. Yeah, um, so it's it's pretty cool. They got basically like four scenarios. Um, so they have the, the the demo goes through basically like an IPv4 to IPv4 um, like client to service connection, and then it's like v4 to v6. And then uh, V6 to V4 and V6 to V6. Um, so it's really cool because, you know, it's kind of like that that blue-green um, deployment scenario. And they show you mm -hmm. how you can, like, set the percentages up. And, and it's all, like, super intuitive, super easy to use, super clean in the interface. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really cool. It's, it's a pretty quick demo. Um, it, it just Lattice makes things like this super easy. Um, and if, if you came from the podcast episode, this is exactly what Alexandra was talking about during the episode um, to, to make, you know, V6 migrations, especially much easier. Um, what, what did you think about it, Tim? I was thinking I got to go look for a new job. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, what was, what was great? Actually, what I really enjoyed about it, though, is kind of the bane of network engineers everywhere is is dual stacking, like in, in kind of making things, you know, V6 and V4 kind of coexist. Uh, in a way that doesn't involve the thousand different six to four type of, of translations. And the way they just kind of like ding dong, plug, plug, done. And, and it's like you know, all of a sudden V4 can talk to V6 and vice versa. I mean, it covers a lot of migration scenarios out there for people. Um, you know, a lot of people who have to get on V6, but their apps aren't going to be able to get there because they're, they're like lift and shift or legacy or, or, you know, the, 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 uh, or where they're building greenfield servers on v6, let, knowing that v6 is the next thing, but all our clients are still on v4. It's really cool. I, it's good to see it all plugged in and, and them all talking together and how easy it is. Couldn't agree more. So yeah, without uh, without further ado, let's let's get into the demo. Hey there, everyone. My name is Adam, and I'm joined by my colleague Ankit. We're both AWS networking specialists. Ankit and I would like to take a few minutes of your time to talk about modern networking addressing schemes, but through the lens of AWS application networking services. What are those, I hear you ask? Well, AWS application networking services allow you to simplify and improve your application's network architecture. These solutions provide your traditional and modern applications with improved security, availability, performance, and streamlined monitoring capabilities that provide greater visibility between your services at a level of abstraction higher than that of the network. An increasing number of organizations are adopting IPv6 in their environments, driven by factors such as government mandates in certain geographies to more technical pressures like public IP version 4 space exhaustion, private IPv4 scarcity, and by the need to reach customers in geographies that use IPv6 exclusively. Being candid, IPv6 is not a new protocol, and the migration to this standard has had its moments of acceleration in the recent past, along with periods of stagnation, the latter due largely to the ingenuity and careful planning by the global community. Nevertheless, talking to customers and helping them understand how they can use IPv6 with their AWS workloads should be front of mind in any of networking conversations that we have. Whilst wholesale adoption has been slow to date, times are changing. 
IPv6 today is very much supported in AWS and is the future of the connected world. So back to the point. While undergoing these transformations, customers sometimes find it difficult to plan for and assess application behavior in IPv6 enabled environments. Today, we want to show you how you can leverage Amazon VPC Lattice to adopt IPv6 for your workloads and seamlessly migrate from an existing IPv4 only to an IPv6 enabled service architecture. Ankit. Thanks, Adam. So let us talk about Amazon VPC Lattice. VPC Lattice is an application networking service that consistently connects, monitors, and secures communication between your services. And these services could either be running on IPv4 stacks or IPv6 stacks. We see customers create multi-account deployments on AWS, where each developer team gets an account of their own, and each developer team manages the lifecycle of their applications. Because of that, the IPv6 adoption may end up being a very distributed process, where some uh, application teams may adopt IPv4, whereas others may still be on IPv4 stacks. Because of this, the networking teams need to create, maintain, and manage co connectivity for both the IPv4 stack and the IPv6 stack. Now, this opens up very specific flow requirements. The four flow requirements are, firstly, when the client and the service are both IPv4 only, Secondly, when the IP when the client is IPv4, but the service is IPv6 enabled. Thirdly, when the client is IPv6, but the service is IPv4. And then fourthly, you guessed it, the client and the service are both IPv6 enabled. So we will use this checklist through, throughout the next few minutes during the demo to ensure that we are hitting all of these specific use cases. Now, historically, we, we have seen customers use mechanisms like NAT to provide connectivity between IPv4 stacks and IPv6 stacks. But in this demo, we will see how customers can use Amazon VPC Lattice to provide this connectivity. So let's go ahead and define our use case. In this deployment, we have two applications, App 1 and App 2, and both of them are deployed on IPv4 only workloads. Both of these apps require an upgrade into IPv6, and we will use VPC Lattice to provide this or to facilitate this blue-green deployment. Now, um, for Lattice, the first construct that you need to know about is, is the Lattice service network. And the service network is a logical grouping mechanism. And you would associate applications with similar access requirements to the same service network. In this case, we associate both application one and application two with the same service network. Additionally, you would, you would configure VPC associations between the VPCs and the service network as well. Okay, quick question at this point. Um, do we require a VPC association when we need to send requests to a service? Yes, yes, that's a very important point. So you would create a VPC association when your clients are inside a VPC and they would like to access an application that is associated with a VPC Lattice service network. Got it. Awesome. Now let's look at the target state as well. So for this specific use case, what we want to create is a blue-green deployment for each of the applications. For app one in the target state, 10% of the traffic must be sent to the new IPv6 workloads. Whereas in application two, 50% of the uh, incoming traffic should be sent to the newly created IPv6 target group. So at this point in time, let's head into the console and let's see how you can use VPC Lattice to facilitate this blue-green deployment. You, you can find VPC Lattice constructs are, um, under the VPC landing page. So over here, I'm showing a service network. This service network is associated with two applications, App 1 and App 2. So let's dive into App 1. Now the App 1's routing rules say that there is a listener on HTTP port 80 and 100% of incoming requests will be forwarded to the IPv4 only targets because the application is not modernized yet. So before we start modernizing this application, let's verify connectivity. So for that, I'm going to use Systems Manager to log into application two's IPv4 only instance and try to, try to curl application one's lattice provided FQDN. And there you go. So what we see is, is a reply from application one's version one instance that is deployed uh, inside an IPv4 only subnet. So this is the use case where your client is IPv4 only 
and your service is IPv4 only as well, which is exactly what we defined in flow one of this checklist. So let the, let's check this off. Now, at this point in time, we are ready to upgrade application one. And again, the target state architecture for app one upgrade is to create this blue green deployment. For this, we are going to go back into the application one page. We are going to update the routing rule and insert the IPv6 target group as well. The desired outcome for this is to send 10% of traffic to the newly um, created IPv4 target, IPv6 targets. So we provide that configuration, save changes. We ensure that the changes take effect. And to verify that, let's go back into application 2's IPv4 instance and let's issue a few curl commands. And there you go. So the first few curl commands were serviced by application 1's IPv4 only instance. But if you check this one out, this specific response came from application 1's IPv6 workload. So what we have verified at this point in time is, is that you can use Amazon VPC Lattice to provide connectivity from an IPv4 only client and a V6 service. So that satisfies this second flow as well. Thank you. Just a question at this point. Um, presumably this works the other way around as well. I can make a request from an IPv6 only client to an IPv4 client. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm so glad you asked, Adam. So. Uh, at this point in time, since we have updated application one, what we should perhaps do is log into application one's IPv6 workload, which will become the client, and see what happens if we try to access application two's FQDN. And keep in mind, application two is not modernized right now. It's IPv4 only. So let's go to our terminal. This is the v6 client, which is application one's workload. And if I try to curl application two's FQDN, what I see is, I see a reply from application 2's version 1 workload, which is deployed in IPv4 only. So what this means is, is that even the reverse traffic flow, wherein the client is IPv6, but the service is IPv4, is also something that VPC Lattice provides with the existing configuration that we have. And by the way, we set all this up in the last four minutes or so. So at this point in time, we are ready to upgrade application 2 as well. So for upgrading application two, the desired outcome is creating a blue-green deployment, wherein 50% of the traffic is sent to application two's IPv6 workloads. So let's go back to the console. And at this point, we are going to head into application two. We update the routing rules of application two. We provide the weight configuration the config has taken effect and now let's go back to the same ipv6 instance that we used for application one and we will try to hit application two so there you go what this shows is is that roughly half the requests are sent are serviced by application two's version one instance and the other half is serviced by application two's IPv6 instance. So at this point in time, we have satisfied or verified the fourth flow in our checklist as well, in which case the client is IPv6 and the service is IPv6 as well. And again, during this configuration, we only used VPC lattice constructs to facilitate this communication. And kid, I was going to ask that actually, we absolutely didn't use any type of natting technology or routing table entries to achieve this, did we? Oh, that is that is correct. So we did not touch any um, routing tables. We did not touch any um, um, natting configuration. We did not insert any um, managed self-managed uh, man in the middle boxes. All we did was use VPC lattice configuration to facilitate an IPv6 adoption for two sample applications that we saw in the demo. And with that, Adam, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thanks, Ankit, and thanks everyone for watching. In this demo, we explored how you can use VPC Lattice to seamlessly implement a blue-green style IPv4 to IPv6 application modernization. If you'd like to find out more about IPv6 or application networking with VPC Lattice, please check out our official documentation.
And if you'd like to get in touch with us, our email addresses are right here. Thanks for tuning in.